And in interviews, most of the time, people really stick to just answering questions. But when people feel like they've learned an insider tip about you, they feel like they can make that connection with you. How often do we think of the elevator pitch just as a one-sided conversation? It and, it's, and it's really, I got to get my part out but we forget about the other and we forget about bringing somebody in on along for the ride. Welcome back to the Career Advancement Academy. We hope you loved our last conversation last week where we talked about the hidden job search strategy that your competition is using to land your dream job. If you haven't had a chance to check that out yet, make sure you go back and listen. This month, we turn our attention to all things interviews. Mm -hmm. What's our podcast for today, Kara? Our podcast for today is the three things to remember when crafting your elevator pitch. Did you know, Jack, that one of the most commonly asked interview questions is, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my We're going to do that today. <laughs> well, so most likely if you are watching or listening to this podcast, or if you've ever been in an interview or a professional networking setting, or just have been around someone that you've never met before, most likely you have been asked the question, so tell me a little bit about yourself. And when that question comes up, I have heard from so many different professionals that the reaction is all over the board. <laughs> right either one it's the deer in the headlights right it's ooh, i don't know what to say uh my name is kara and i live my life right or it's all of a sudden i am telling my entire life story and 10 minutes later i woke up from a fugue state and i have no idea what just happened right and you see the light go out from your audience's eyes because you know that they're not paying attention but you can't stop yourself right so when that happens, what do you do? Well, I am going to tell you today with my partner here, Jack, on how the three things that you can remember in order to practice a really powerful elevator pitch that not only is going to wow whatever audience that you're with, but it's going to help you feel as confident as possible and showcase your professionalism. I love it. I, I really cannot wait to dive into these three things. This is going to be a lot of fun. I know. I am so excited. So let's go ahead and break down the elevator pitch. And why is this so important? Well, first and foremost, let's talk about why it's important. Well, a stat from a very long time ago said that 70% of hiring managers decide within the first 60 seconds if they want to hire you and 90% know within the first 15 minutes. So with this coupled with the fact that the most popular interview question is tell me about yourself, a lot of times when working, Jack and I have worked with thousands of professionals, we focus or we have heard from clients that they focus a lot on answering interview questions, right? This, the common ones, tell me about your greatest weakness, your greatest strength. Uh, tell me about your leadership style, all that other stuff, but they don't always focus on the elevator pitch, right? Yeah, it's a, it's like almost like this forgotten little part yeah. of the, the interview process. It is, it is. But when you have a strong elevator pitch that you are um, really proud of and really confident and you can deliver extremely well, <laughs> it is going to do a number of things for you. One, it's going to nail that first impression, right? And those first impressions are super, super critical. That's the first thing. But the second thing is in an interview setting, I don't know, are you a little nervous? Always. Right? You always get a little bit of sweat on your palms, you know? Yeah. A little like, I don't know about you, but I feel like I can't get enough breath in when I'm in an interview. Like I can't breathe enough and I'm talking too fast. And then I feel like I'm out of breath. Like I just ran a marathon. And so what tends to happen is those nerves come into play a lot in interviews. And we're going to be talking about some tricks for this throughout the, the rest of this month of how to calm some of your nerves. But when you are executing a very confident elevator pitch for your mindset, for your confidence, the rest of the interview will go off without a hitch most of the time because of the fact that your confidence skyrockets when you can nail that first question. I absolutely love it. So I, I need to know, Kara, what 
is the the breakdown of a good elevator pitch? Great question. So I like to put everything into frameworks as much as possible. So if you're with us on this journey this month, you're going to learn a lot of my frameworks for interviews. The framework for elevator pitch is a three-part framework. So these are the three things to remember for a powerful interview pitch or interview. Yeah. Yeah. yeah elevator pitch <laughs> and for an interview or for any time, right? The first part is really going to be an opening. So this opening is going to be uh, short. It's going to be about 10 seconds long. The whole elevator pitch in and of itself is going to be between 60 to 75 seconds. But the first opening is really just going to be very short, 10 seconds. The next part is going to be about your professional experience. This is going to be about 30 to 45 seconds. This is going to be the meat of your elevator pitch. And this is where you're going to wow people. And we're going to dig into each of these sections shortly. But the final part is going to be, why are you excited to be talking to the person in front of you? And this is really, really critical. And most people forget this part. So with all that being said, if you can get these three parts done between 60 to 75 seconds, you are going to nail that first impression. Oh, I can't wait. Let, let's get into creating this thing. I can't wait to see what it turns out. Me too. Me too. Okay. So the first part, the opening, the opening serves to introduce you. It serves to catch the listener's attention and we want to try and use storytelling throughout the interview as much as possible because experts say that a story is 22 times more memorable than just a simple fact. But whenever we are also opening, I like to try and share a somewhat personal tidbit about ourselves. Okay. I need to know what okay. is somewhat? Somewhat. Okay. Here is going to be the clarifying part of this. When you are in an interview, you want to be very careful about what you share when it comes to personal information. You don't want to share anything about your marital status, familial status, aka do you have kids or do you not have kids? You don't want to uh, share anything about your religion, um, your sexual orientation, or any of those protected class uh, things that are protected when in, you're in an interview. However, why I like to share a little bit of a personal, somewhat personal thing, and this could be, uh, my name is Kara and I grew up in New Jersey and now I live in Tennessee, right? That's a little bit personal, but it's not too personal because you can find that information almost anywhere online, right? Or it could be like, hey, uh, I am, my name is Kara and I went to this school and I got my degree in this stuff that they already know, but why is that really important to you? And I really love it because I have a passion for X, Y, and Z, right? We have a client that's in healthcare um, and one of his opening things is, hi, my name is so-and-so and I work in the healthcare sales uh, industry because I have a passion for how healthcare technology helps people that we love, right? So this is a way to add a little bit of a somewhat personal statement at the very beginning. And here's the reason why. You want to know? I, I need to know. I need to know. Okay. In an interview setting, in a professional setting, most of the time it sticks to business, right? It's professional. And in interviews, most of the time people really stick to just answering questions. Mm -hmm. But when people feel like they've learned an insider tip about you, they feel like they can make that connection with you, right? So when you can share something that's somewhat personal, but not, not too, too personal, but something that's like, hey, I'm sharing about my life with you because I want to get to know you. You've created that bond with that person from the jump. And this is why I believe that this is a really great way to open up your elevator pitch. I really, really like that tip. I think it's a way to almost kind of humanize your pitch. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah that's so cool. I, I yeah. really would like to try to incorporate this more for myself. Absolutely. So that's my little tip. Does not have to be long. Keep it to 10 seconds. Keep it to, you know, um, for instance, right now I work at home and my office assistant is my little black cat. You might see her in the background, professionally speaking, and then we roll into the second part, right? So anything that really humanizes you without giving too much. Okay. The second part is really going to be that professional experience. This is where you get to shine. 
I, 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 I love shining. I know. <laughs> Especially after a good salt scrub. Yeah, shine bright like a Okay, so um, this is really the most exciting part. So here's the, the true the true fact about your resume, right? Your resume is a needed tool in the job search process, but as much as you've spent time revamping your resume, you may have hired someone to get your resume. And all of these things are really, really important to get you where you are right now in that interview to talk to that hiring manager. Most likely that hiring manager has scanned your resume for about seven to 10 seconds. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to wow them at the very jump in your tell me about yourself. So the way that I like to do this is I like to break the, the professional stuff into two parts. So yeah. Nice. Okay. The first is going to be, and it's really about two to three sentences, but the first part is really going to be an overarching statement about who you are as a professional. What I like to call this is this is your branding statement, right? This is going to be that overarching statement that really, defines you when it comes towards that next step in your career, right? So for instance, you might say, um, hi, my name is so-and-so and currently I'm living in the state of whatever. And I really love the fact that I get to experience all four seasons. Professionally speaking, I'm a technology leader that focuses in the healthcare industry that, and I have been able to work for these types of companies driving these types of results. That was smooth. Oh, thank you. I just kind of made it up. Thanks. Um, but that's that's going to be an overarching, right? I'm this type of professional. This is what I do. And these are the types of things that I focus on, right? From there, we want to supplement that statement. We want to prove to them that you are who you say you are. Now how do we prove it? How do we prove? We got to prove. We got to bring it. I know, right? Well, Jack, how are we going to prove it? I, I would think... Evidence. Evidence is how we prove the case. That's right. And you want to know what? When people look at your resume and when people are listening to you, what stands out when people are scanning and when people are listening? Numbers. Numbers stand out. So whenever you can supplement your stories or your elevator pitch with a number or a result, that's just going to make it that much more powerful. And it's going to prick the ears of your, uh, your listener. And they're going to say, wow, okay, that's pretty exciting. So with this uh, random uh, example that I'm using right now, I'm a technology, healthcare, whatever. Um, most recently at my most recent organization, I was fortunate to be able to launch this program that ended up driving conversion rates by X percent by collaborating with this team and this team and whatever, right? So right now, that professional experience part, you've already stated who you are and you've backed it up with an impressive, impressive result that supplements and proves that statement that you've already said. What I love most about this approach is because it's so concise and you're hitting me with kind of that evidence. Now I'm leaning in and now I kind of want, okay, tell me more. Exactly, right? Exactly. So the reason why this is so important and you might be sitting there thinking, well, that's really short. You're not giving them a lot. Exactly. Most people's attention spans, they only last between 90 seconds to two minutes. So if your answers are going longer than that, or your first impression uh, question answer is going longer than that, you've already lost their attention. And so the reason why we want to have a short, impactful elevator pitch right at the jump is so that you tease them with your impressive achievements and who you are so that it kickstarts a really good conversation. We don't want to lay out the buffet of everything that you have. We want to hit them with an appetizer so that they say, I want the full meal. Yeah, I think the the bottom line we get out of this is teasing, a little bit of teasing is okay in yeah. an elevator pitch, yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. Right. So you want to know what the third part is, the third thing to remember. I mean, we got to finalize this deal, so tell me. <laughs> we do need to finalize this deal. So this is what really sets people apart and can truly, truly kickstart a really, really good interview conversation. Hmm. 
the third part of an elevator pitch. You've already done a personal sort of opening line. You've hit them with the real good goods, right? Here's who I am, what I focus on, what I do in my industry. Here's an example of that backs up that statement. The last part is why you are so excited to be in that conversation, okay? The reason why this is really, really important is as an ex-corporate recruiter, the amount of interviews that I have conducted where the person on the other phone is like, hi, yes, of course I can do that. Yes, I have experience with that. And it almost has put me to sleep. When you can show excitement, enthusiasm, and the fact that you've done research and that you're actually excited to be in that conversation, it will, that in and of itself will set you apart from your comp- competition. But the other thing is that it will help build the excitement of the person across from you. Excitement is contagious, right? You can't be around someone at a theme park, right? And be in the dumps. I've seen a few, but, but it's hard. It's really it's hard. So hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard. <laughs> so if you convey your excitement, all of a sudden your interviewer is going to be excited that you're there with them. I, I'm all game for this. Let's go. Yeah. So how do you do that? Right. Let's start from the beginning. Hi, my name is so-and-so I live here and here's why I love it. Professionally speaking, I am this type of leader or professional that focuses on this and gets this type of result. Most recently at my most recent organization, here's how I've done it with these types of people getting this type of result. And why I'm so excited to be talking to you today is that I read the job description and it seems like a really great alignment with my skills and experience. And I checked out the company's website and it seems like your values and your missions really align with my personal values. Now, I want to throw in an, an extra little tip. We always love an extra tip. Okay. Would that elevator pitch in and of itself be good and powerful? Seems like it. Yeah. Let's take it to the next level. Okay. Now the master class has started. <laughs> the master class has started. If you can end that pitch, right, with a question, now all of a sudden you have taken control of that interview. Wow. Now you've started that ping pong conversation back and forth. And you are now in that mode where instead of being in a submissive position, making that interview or that authoritative figure, you're now sitting as equals and you're both trying to figure out, is this a mutually beneficial fit? And as we know, as you've listened to last week, the traditional job search process is sometimes a broken process and the job description isn't always accurate to what the hiring manager is looking for, right? So when you can have a powerful pitch like this, hey, here's who I am. Professionally speaking, this is what I do. Here's a statement to back it up. And I'm really excited to talk to you because I've read the job description. Seems like I'm a really good fit. Looked at the company and it seems like a really great environment. I'd love to ask you, hiring manager, what are you really looking for in this role? All of a sudden, instead of going into those stale old interview questions of back and forth, you've now taken control of that conversation and you're getting the information that maybe other candidates aren't getting, the real information, the stuff of what the hiring manager is truly looking for and the pain that they're really feeling. This insight here, I feel like just unlock something because how often do we think of the elevator pitch just as a one-sided conversation it and is. it's, and it's really, I got to get my part out, but we forget about the other and we forget about bringing somebody in on along for the ride. And I think that adding the question is just, it's going to build that level of rapport so much more mm-hmm. and allow that interviewer to feel that you're really engaged in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And one of the great things is that this elevator pitch framework can be used for just about anywhere, right? So if someone at a networking event were to come up to me and say, hey, tell me about yourself, I'd say, hey, absolutely. My name is Kara. I live in Tennessee with my two cats and my husband, right? I say that at a networking event because I'm not in an interview, right? Professionally speaking, I'm an executive career coach and resume writer. 
And I am also a Forbes contributor. I've helped over 2000 professionals land their dream job through our coaching programs and have written over 5,000 resumes. I've also reviewed over 500,000 resumes throughout my career and have been responsible for $12 million uh, in salary increases. I'm really excited to be talking to you. In fact, I would love to hear from you. What do you do and why are you here at this event? right? Now, all of a sudden, it doesn't seem like it's just one-sided. You're bringing people in to that conversation. And one of the things that we've learned from working with thousands of people over and over again, when you get down to the base level of humanity, especially after the pandemic, is people want to be listened to. People want to have an intentional conversation Mm -hmm. and they want to be drawn in. And if you can actively listen, keep your elevator pitch short and create that back and forth conversation, you're going to be remembered at the end of the day versus someone who had a stale elevator pitch that went on too long and didn't engage the other person. I 100% agree with these tips. This is fire. Now I, I have to ask if I was to want to practice my elevator pitch, if mm-hmm. I if I just felt it was just real clunky, do you have any tips that ways that I could kind of do this to just feel a little bit more confident going to my next networking event or interview? Absolutely. Here's the best way to craft your elevator pitch and get really, really good at it. One, the first thing, the first step is to write it out. Write it out. That's the first thing. And then practice it a couple of times. Put a little um, post-it note of it on your mirror in your bathroom and reread it over and over again, right? Until you can get really comfortable with it. The next step after that is to take it and bullet point it out to just the, the couple of notes so that you can trigger your memory to remember what it is and practice it that way. From there, Take it and have your friends, your family member, if you have a mentor, have them ask you so that you can practice it with real life people, right? And if you don't have that, or if that makes you a little nervous, the step before that could be pull out your camera or your cell phone, right? And record yourself saying this elevator pitch a couple of times and watch it back. This is probably my biggest piece of advice when it comes to being more confident in delivering uh, whatever it is that you need to deliver because watching yourself on video is gonna be one of the most uncomfortable things you've ever had to do. So wait, but I, I have a question. Yeah. So you want me to practice as I'm going to deliver. You want me to work on my mannerisms, how I'm connecting, my smile. All of those things matter. Okay. Yeah. But I want you to do it just as you first and record it and watch it back. And that's going to help increase your self-awareness so that you can see, oh, maybe I don't like the fact that I'm constantly looking down when I'm giving my elevator speech. Maybe I need to look up. Maybe I want to pull my shoulders back a little bit. Maybe I want to be a little bit more enthusiastic. Maybe I want to, whatever it is, right? So those are some of the things that I would highly recommend so that you get really good at this. And of course, we're going to be giving you a lot more interview tips and strategies throughout the next month, including tomorrow. We are going to be dropping a full length video on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is called Optimize Career Solutions, where we're going to be talking about how to use the STAR formula to answer any interview question. And with these frameworks, like the framework we gave you today, this is going to help eliminate some of that mental load of what do I say? Oh, and then the nerves and the anxiety comes in. When you can practice these frameworks, you can practice it at home with other people or with a coach or a mentor, you're able to get a lot more confident and really impress people in the interview. But this elevator pitch is the best part to start off this month because of the fact that first impressions truly are everything. And when you have a really good elevator pitch, you're comfortable and confident in, you can really go far. I love this conversation. I think this is going to help everybody over this next month and this next hiring cycle. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Kara. Absolutely, Jack. So we hope that this episode helps you nail that next elevator pitch or the next time you get asked. So tell me about yourself and helps you open doors to the next opportunities. We really believe your impact matters. And sometimes we just need a little guidance and assistance to showcase it, right? So I highly recommend if this episode was valuable, please send it to someone who who you know, who might be in a job search or might be considering a job search. We would love to make sure that they get 
to nail their elevator pitch as well. Stay tuned for tomorrow on our YouTube channel where we're going over the star formula to make sure that you can answer any interview questions. And next week where we're going over all the different types of things with interviews for the rest of this month, make sure to like and subscribe to this podcast wherever you get your podcast. It really helps us out and leave a review if it's helped you as well. We will see you next week. Stay tuned and we wish you all the best. Thanks for joining us. 